Hi there, class. This is uh, International Marketing, Marketing 335G, um, the online section. Um, I am Chad Jardine. I'll be your professor for this class. Um, forgive my voice. Uh, I've had this uh, flu that uh, I guess has been going around. In any case, I don't normally sound this bad. Um, I've been hoping that my voice would recover before uh, Wednesday, but um, this is what you got. In any case, uh, welcome to the class. Glad to have you. Um, We'll, uh, this lecture will be broken into two sections. The first one is an introduction to the course, and the second one is a lecture on Chapter 1. Um, the international marketing class is taught concurrent with a face-to-face -face section, so keep your eye out. It's possible that I, may, I could mix and match something between your section and the face-to-face -face section. Um, just bring that to my attention, and we'll get it cleared up. Um, so with that said, we'll dive right in. I'll try to speak quickly so that uh, uh, watching these videos doesn't take you too long. First thing is welcome to a class in the dark arts. Um, I put this up here just because marketing is about influence and persuasion. Um, we're going to talk about tools and how, how these marketing tools are applied in international settings, um, especially in the um, sense of introducing a new product to an international market. Um, and also, like, how could you resist a, an opportunity to put Snape up on a slide? Um, so here's a, a little bit of information about me. Um, you can reach me at this phone number or email. Um, at any time during the course. Um, I am an adjunct, so I, I have a day job. I work as the head of marketing for a, a local software company called GoReact. We'll actually get a chance to use the product that my company makes um, in, in the course. Um, and so as a result of that, I'm, I may be uh, a little less responsive than uh, somebody who's a full-time faculty member, but I will try to get back to you as soon as possible and certainly um, in plenty of time when you've got a, a deadline-driven uh, issue involved. And how can we start off a course without a good Dilbert? Um, I discovered a unique sequence of sights and sounds that makes people buy things they don't need. I recommend that we destroy all of my lab notes and rid the world of this evil tool. He never told him what marketing is. He didn't need to know. So here's what to expect from Marketing 335. Now, for those of you who haven't seen Seth Godin before, this quote, marketing is telling a story about your value that resonates enough with people that they want to give you money. And so we're going to talk about how that works. The coursework will be broken up into these six sections. Um, we do use um, uh, McGraw-Hill Connect that's, a, that's a attached to the textbook. And so the Learn Smart assignments in McGraw-Hill Connect, um, these essentially combine reading and quizzes together. Um, those represent 15% of your grade. We'll have individual writing assignments, and I'll go into each of these in detail um, in the next slides. We do have some teamwork. Uh, as well as the main project for the course is a country notebook, which is a, a, um, as close to a real-life simulation as we can provide about introducing a new product into a, uh, a new market, a market that is not your home or native market. Um, we'll, have some, we'll have four exams as we go along the way. The, the final exam, uh, we don't do it comprehensive, so it'll just be the same as the, the other three exams you take along the way in the course. And then participation uh, is also a significant part of your grade. That In this course, that represents uh, participation in discussions. Um, there's, and there are a number of discussion assignments, um, as well as uh, commenting on uh, your peers' videos and, and presentations. Uh, this grading scale is pretty much the same as you get in every other class. So the textbook that we use is the 17th edition of International Marketing. Um, this is actually kind of the gold standard for um, marketing textbooks. Uh, it is really expensive, though. Um, so the, the hard copy version of this text is about 225 230 bucks, <clears throat> And uh, that, like, that kind of knocks my socks off. So what I've spec'd for this course is the online version, so the Connect Online Access. Uh, which should run you about 125 bucks, so it cuts your cost almost in half. Um, I realize it's still pretty expensive. It's the best I, best I can do for you for this course. Um, the department kind of makes some of those decisions. In addition to the text, there will be um, articles, cases, uh, podcasts, videos, um, and other materials that will be provided uh, at no charge. There's one more item, though, that, uh, that you'll have to purchase, and that is this Harvard Business Review case. Our final case study for the course will be um, this case on L'Oreal in China. Um, it'll be done as a team, so the, the uh, 425 cost can be split among all your team members. Um, so mention the Learn Smart assignments. If you're familiar with these, um, then that, that should be no problem. If you have any issues with this as you get into it, please just contact me um, either through Canvas or by email, um, and I'll help walk you through them. 
we do these, um, there's a Learn Smart assignment for every chapter in the text that we cover. We'll cover chapters 1 through 8 and then chapters 12 through 18 through over the course of the semester. Um, I usually assign them as uh, in two-week blocks and um, I'll do that just so that you have the time to, to work on them rather than doing one every single week. So writing assignments for this course, um, typically there'll be uh, one or two pages single spaced um, attached to some source of media. It may be a, a podcast that covers topics that we're, ta that we're covering in, in the course. It may be um, a, a relevant video or current events. Um, I do all, uh, all the writing assignments will be single spaced. So um, they'll be submitted uh, on Canvas. And so double spaced is uh, designed to be able to write notes in the margins. Nobody uses double spaced for um, uh, real life work. So uh, single spaced. Um, there will be some where you get to choose your own topic and so you can as you get familiar with the course topics you can go out and find something that's uh, in the in the business press that is relevant to uh, what we're talking about in class and uh, bring that in write about it and then we will have um, we have five case studies across the the course the fifth one I just mentioned is the L'Oreal in China and then there are four smaller cases uh, stemming from the text and so those are typically uh, two-page write-ups um, all of them except the first one will be done as a team, so that'll, that should lighten your load a little bit. Now you notice that this class fills your um, cultural uh, requirement, or uh, what, intercultural, your GI requirement. This is the assignment in the class that does that, and so um, you'll want to be prepared for this. Um, it's a cultural interview, so the requirement is that you need to find somebody who is not from your native culture. So if you're if you're born outside the United States and you grew, you, you, know, you grew up outside the United States, you're welcome to interview an American. Um, if you're in the United States, um, find somebody who, who is not from the United States and interview them. Ultimately, what you'll produce is a three-page write-up. There's detailed descriptions on this in Canvas. Um, and the, the core objective of this, and this is the one thing that, that if you miss, you'll lose points for. The core objective is to understand your SRC. SRC is an acronym that stands for your self-referencing criterion. This means you, you're becoming aware of something that you, um, that you would have either missed or misunderstood because um, of the culture that you grew up in. Um, so you want to become aware of that, identify that, and be able to mitigate that in your decision. So as you're making, as you're introducing a product into a new market, that becomes particularly important because you don't want uh, all because we all have a culture, and you don't want the native elements of your own culture to prevent you from uh, either either uh, prevent you from making a right choice or cause you to make a wrong choice in introducing a product to a new market. Now we do have uh, also, as I mentioned, some team projects. Um, I know that a lot of you will identify with the sentiment in this slide, um, that when I die I want the people I did group projects with in college to lower me into my grave so they can let me down one last time. Um, I'd encourage you uh, to work hard to not be the person in your group that makes everybody else feel like this. Um, groups for the online section are formed uh, automatically, so um, you will probably never meet in person. Um, the online section is designed that way, but there are a lot of uh, things to coordinate and discuss uh, and submit as a group. Um, and, and as much as, as group work gets uh, a bad rap, um, there's some real legitimate reasons for why working as a team uh, is useful, um, especially in an online setting. Um, in the workforce, you'll find that there's a lot of, um, you, you rarely work alone. Um, you're always interfacing with somebody else. Um, and the dynamics of your group uh, really do mirror what you face in the real real world. So your ability to navigate that, to uh, exercise leadership when it's called for, and uh, communication and coordination in order to get your projects done is a, is a great microcosm for you to, to uh, practice the type of things that you'll face in the real world. And that includes uh, doing the same with people that maybe aren't your favorite. Um, so a lot of times, usually I get reports back that, that uh, groups are, um, are had a real positive experience, but just want to prep you that there's there's learning even if you find that you have group members that that uh, you're struggling with so as a result you know I, I prefer uh, this approach um, part of my background I've done I've done marketing for uh, microcap companies that's companies that earn less than 250 million dollars in revenue per year I've done marketing for microcap companies for about 18 years and uh, one of those was um, a multi-level marketing company which is not my background not my roots I, I uh, was recruited into that company and did their marketing and there's tons of um, of team messaging in, in MLM. So I borrowed from that to give you a little encouragement on your teamwork. Teamwork makes the dream work, people. We can do it. 
here's the team assignments you have coming up. So the case study write-ups and prep, the first case uh, will be done individually. The um, second through fifth cases will be done as a team. So you'll have a single submission. One team member will submit, um, and that will that'll be your score. And then we have the country notebook project. So uh, for the country notebook, what, this is uh, the scenario where you will you are um, essentially you're you are a marketing team with the responsibility of making a recommendation to your executives um, at a multinational corporation. And your recommendation is about all the considerations necessary to launch a product into a new market. And uh, we'll provide a lot more detail uh, about that as we go, but just to, um, to give you a basic breakdown, the Country Notebook project uh, as a whole is broken into four parts. So there's four areas that you need to research and understand in terms of introducing the new product. Um, we will have submissions, we'll break that up into three. So there will be part one, part two, and then part three and four are done combined. Um, and they will be done near the end of the class. So um, uh, this, is, this is probably more uh, akin to a final for this class than even the last exam. So for each one of those parts, right, which, which there's four parts, the last two are combined, so there's three submissions. And for each of those three submissions, you'll submit a written report, three to five single-spaced pages. You'll do an oral presentation. For this, you'll use the GoReact software, which is attached to the assignment in Canvas. So you just open the assignment. Your group needs to come up with a naming convention so that you have your team uh, number and then which uh, then a number indicating what order your submission goes. So since you're, you're not together online, you'll need to submit each portion of the oral presentation for each member of the group in, in order. Um, and then you'll be responsible to watch uh, other teams' presentations and give them feedback uh, using the same tool. Then finally, after we're done with all of the sections, um, the last component is a uh, one to two page write-up uh, peer evaluation. So for this, what you will do is, this is your chance to explain the group dynamics, things that worked, things that didn't work, how you solved problems. If there's, um, this is also a place for you to kind of justify the work that you did in, in participation with the group. And also if you had a group members that you felt like dragged your scores down, uh, this is a time for you to, to kind of outline that. The, the paper is not designed to just be a gripe session, but if you have legitimate uh, issues within your group that you felt like affected your grade, this is, this is the point to bring those to my attention for consideration. So with the cases that we do, I mentioned we've got five cases. Um, the opportunity for cases is, uh, one of the things that you, that you deal with is, is that experience can't be taught. Like I can't, I can't give you the experience that I've had doing different types of marketing. But what I can do is create a scenario where you are... Um, faced with the same types of questions or the same type of problems that you would experience in the real world. And so the, the goal with the case study is for you to have to think through those issues. Put yourself in the shoes of the protagonist. You know, the, every case will have somebody who's trying to figure out some decision. Um, and put yourself in the shoes of the protagonist. Make a decision and then defend it. So there will be a list of questions at the end of the cases, and what you want to do is by that point you want to say, hey, look, we decided, yes, we would enter this country, or yes, we would uh, make this change in our branding strategy, or yes, we would alter our messaging this way, uh, and then defend that. So stand behind your decision, and that creates a more real-world um, opportunity for you to learn than, than just about anything else. So cases are, are kind of championed by the Harvard Business School. Um, they're sometimes lightly used in undergraduate work, but uh, I, think you'll, I think you'll enjoy them if you, if you approach them with the right right attitude. So one of the examples here, and, and you can post your answer to this, but here is a puzzle, and we'll use this as kind of like a case. So here's a puzzle. There are eight balls identical in size and shape, and one of the balls is slightly heavier than the other seven. You have a scale that's a balance, and so what you're able to do is, what are, or the, the puzzle is, what is the fewest number of weighings required to find which ball is the heaviest. You can post this answer in um, under uh, discussions and I'll post it, I'll put a thing there, a place for you to, to post your answer um, and uh, maybe we'll throw a few points at it for extra credit if you, if, uh, so I can tell that you actually watch this. Uh, but thinking through this type of scenario um, is one of the things that cases allow you to do. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, so the, the four exams that we have, they will be based on the chapters uh, in the text. 
um, and also our lectures are based on the chapters in the text. So um, what I've tried to do is, as we go through the lectures, I'll try to indicate slides that help you study for test questions with this little test question icon. Um, that should help make it to where you, you don't have to take a ton of notes as you're listening to these. Um, <coughs> excuse me. And you can um, you sh you know, just focus in on the things that you really need to study. So uh, another element about my class is that uh, in the real world, due dates matter. Um, so let's say that you were um, you had a new product that you were you were launching at the Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas, which happens every year. Just just wrapped up last week. Um, there's no coming in the next week after the show is over and and launching your product. If you miss it, you miss it. So in my class, due dates are real. Um, that means that that um, as a rule, I don't accept late work. Um, if you have a truly um, you know, exigent circumstance, let me know and, and uh, we can talk about it. But in general, just assume that, that uh, I don't accept late work. Um, another thing is, is that I try, to, I try to put a lot of detail into the descriptions on Canvas and, and uh, elsewhere. Um, don't get, come to the last minute and not know how to complete an assignment. If you, if you read through that and you feel like you don't understand how to complete an assignment, please just reach out to me and I'm more than happy to, um, to review it with you. Uh, so this isn't an English class, but please proofread your stuff. Uh, marketing is a, is about communicating, and if you're if you're writing poorly, that's something that that I encourage you to take the time and effort um, to improve. Uh, being a good writer will impact everything that you do. Um, I I, uh, I I just couldn't stress that enough. Um, do what you can. If you write if you if you turn something in and it's really terrible, it it will lose points because it won't be able you won't be able to effectively communicate the message. In my class, I I do not. Um, like I, I try to be real sensitive on the page length requirements, so um, there there are no gigantic page length requirements for any of the write ups that you submit in my class, um, but I I expect there it the work to be quality work. Um, you you the page length that you have is just barely enough to really submit um, something that that uh, that covers the basis. So um, take that into consideration. I also, if you if you are really verbose, I don't give extra points for going over the page length requirements. Um, forcing me to read something that just because you didn't take the time to write it uh, in a shorter way, um, that that's not a way to win points here either. So ultimately, what I'm telling you is that um, the the by and, and you know far and away the way that people um, don't get A's in my class is that they fail to turn things in or turn them in on time. So here's a lady who decided to go swimming with polar bears in the in the Berlin Zoo. Don't feel like this lady at the end of the semester. Um, it's it's um, much more about just doing the work and turning it in. And uh, um, I'm an adjunct. I can give everybody an A, and and the worst they can do is fire me. So um, I encourage you to uh, to all get an A. Uh, with that said, then the next video will be uh, the chapter one. Thank you.